What's up, positive bitches? How are we doing today? If you're hearing this episode, then you are meant to be here, so keep listening. On that Bitches Positive podcast, sometimes we will laugh, other times, baby girl, we're gonna cry, but we will always walk away feeling our most empowered positive bitch self. That is babe in true connection with herself. On this podcast, we unbecome who we are not so we can fully step into exactly who we came here to be. Today, we're talking about how to forgive yourself and release self-criticism. I was talking to you positive bees on Instagram and we decided that for the month of February, because hello Valentine's Day, the theme is going to be self love but not that mumbo jumbo self-love that we hear all through social media oh you're binge eating (laughs) shut up and love yourself oh you keep allowing toxic people into your life just shut up and love yourself oh you hate your whole entire life shut up and love yourself no no because Shutting down our feelings and ignoring what it is we truly want, that's not self-love, that's self-hatred, baby girl, okay? So we are breaking down what self-love actually looks like in our life, actionable self-love, how to truly transform and give respect, trust, and love to our self. At the end of the day, the person who needs to believe in us, who needs to push us, who needs to wake us up, it's us. It is us. We are the person who matters the most in our reality. The relationship we have with ourselves is number one, at least when it comes to humans, okay? Our number one relationship always with God, the universe. But when it comes to humans, it has to be here. So the first week of this self-love February theme is all about forgiving ourselves and releasing self-criticism because we can't love ourselves if we're constantly telling ourselves terrible things. We can't love ourselves if we don't even forgive ourselves for past experiences. We are going to take it step by step to learn truly how to love our own vessel. Before we get into it, a couple of announcements. If you're not yet following me on Instagram at vibinwithcc, be sure to follow me there where I will give you daily tips and tricks on how to step into your most magnetic timeline. I use a visual aid of juice to show how you are depleting your energy without even realizing it. People seem to love the juice. They just, everyone wants to know what the juice is. It's vitamin water. I don't know. Anyway, follow me there for those daily tips and tricks. You can also follow this Instagram for this podcast, which is at that bitch is positive, of course, for clips of this podcast. If you are looking to heal after a breakup, join the 21 Day Breakup Glow Up Challenge. All the links will be in the show notes. If you want to learn how to date from your pedestal and get the results that you want, you can join the pedestal path. And of course, I have a couple of workbooks on how to manifest, how to heal your divine feminine, and how to call your power back again All of those magical portals will be in the show notes. And if you really want to make a big splash in 2024, you can book a one-on-one session with me. It's the month of self-love. What is more loving to oneself than working on our energy to shift what we broadcast so we can shift what we get in our life? That's right. When you shift, so will your reality. So if you want to shift your relationships, your career, or just how you're feeling on the day-to-day, you can book a one-on-one session with me. I'm a certified life and energy coach. I have so many different offerings from self-concept work to divine feminine healing work to energy healing inner child work. I will send you all my offerings. You can DM me now on Instagram at vibingwithcc for more. But without further ado, let's get into today's episode. By the way, if you are watching on YouTube and you're wondering, where is Cece? This is not her usual setup. I'm currently in Florida. A girl needed to get out of the cold weather and ground herself in some nature. So I will be here for the next month. And yeah, but we're still going to have That Bitch is Positive every Thursday. Don't worry. I don't have my sparkly mic, but I do have this one. So we're going to make it work. Anyway, let's get into all of this jazz, shall we? So many of us experience this feeling of, ugh, why did I let myself go through that pattern for so long? Why did I keep dating that guy? Why did I keep binge eating? Why did I keep doing these maladapting coping mechanisms? I should have known better. I should have known better. I should have known better. 
I've been there and I get it. But berating ourselves that we should have known better sooner isn't going to help us now. That version of us, we needed her. We needed her to get to this current version of ourselves. We needed her to be the bridge to get us to that next version of who we desire to be. Even this current version of you, it doesn't end here. This current version of you is yet another bridge to another future version of you. Because we're always shifting, we're always changing, we're always up leveling. We can't say, I'm going to love myself and still be telling ourselves every single day, I should have known better. We can't be telling ourselves, I, I, I don't want to love myself, I need to love myself, and be telling ourselves, I'm terrible at this, I'm a mess up, nothing ever works out for me. It doesn't work that way. Okay, you want to heal, you got to get on board with your own healing. You have to be an active participant in your journey if you want to see your life change. Because I can jab, 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 jab all day, all night. It won't matter unless you take the reins in your own life and you giddy up on this journey yourself. If we want to truly forgive ourselves and release self-criticism, I'm going to give you four steps. But the primer is to realize you needed that version of you in order to get here. You are living this current incarnation, not just to fly around and be perfect. No, you came here to learn, to grow, to evolve. And how do we evolve? We need to push against something. How do you build muscle? It's through resistance that you physically build muscle. So through resistance, through hardship, we can learn. We don't always have to go through hardship to learn, but oftentimes we do. We do. It's the way of life. Let's get into these four steps. I'm making it so simple. Okay. Four steps for you to forgive yourself and release self-criticism so you can be on your way to truly loving yourself. Now the primer is realizing, well, I needed that version of me to get where I currently am. So I can't hate on her for being my step in the right direction. I can't hate on her for being the bridge to get me where I currently am. I kind of respect her. I kind of needed her. Okay, awesome. Step number one. We have to stop engaging with the self-harming behaviors and thoughts that we're having if we want to actually learn to love ourselves and forgive ourselves. People are going to hurt us. It's a part of life. But you know what I say? Yeah. People may try to hurt me. They may even get away with it. But I will be damned if I hurt myself. Not going to happen. No, not today, not tomorrow, not in this incarnation. I'm not doing that. It's not on my to-do list. Not ever. People are going to hurt us. It's a part of life. Okay, fine. We don't have to hurt ourselves. Ask anyone who's currently alive and they'll tell you someone has hurt them in their past. It happens. We're humans. But we don't have to stay in that hurt. If you stepped in a puddle, I wouldn't be like, oh, no. you, you stepped in a puddle. You have to stay there forever. You, <laughs> you can't step out of that puddle. Who do you think you are? You stepped in that puddle. You can drown in it. No, I'd be like, sis, <laughs> just take your other foot and step out of it. You know, you can keep moving forward. You don't, you don't have to stay in the puddle. You're allowed to move on from the hurt. You don't have to stay in it. You're allowed to step forward from that puddle. You didn't have to stay in it. Why would we stay miserable in that puddle? Okay, you're right. We wouldn't. We wouldn't do that. We may step in puddles. People might try to hurt us, but that doesn't mean we have to continuously hurt ourselves. Now, I'm going to start something on this podcast where it's a mantra moment. Okay, and a mantra moment that I want us to have and I would love for you to include in your life as we're on this self-love journey for February is even if people hurt me, I will not hurt myself. So mantra moment, even if people hurt me, I will not hurt myself. When we let people from our past control our present, what is that doing? That's just allowing them on our pedestal. That's making them more important than we think of ourselves. That's giving them all of our time, all of our attention, all of our focus. And what are we left with? But obsessing about how they hurt us. 
It's bound to happen that people are going to hurt us. We don't need to stay in that hurt. How do we hurt ourselves? And maybe this is what you're currently doing and that's why you're listening to this podcast. Well, we hurt ourselves when we allow those from our past to influence us negatively in our present moment. Honestly, are you really going to let that ex who hurt you in your past control your present relationship? Are you really going to let all the insecurities from that past relationship flood your current healthy relationship? Are you really going to let that teacher from fifth grade who told you you weren't good enough control your current business and how you feel about yourself? Are you really going to let them have that much power over you? It is your adventure. Pick your avatar, baby girl. Pick your avatar. What do you want to do? It's your decision. Are you really going to let these unhealed people control you in your life for the rest of your incarnation? Or do you want to step up and say, I'm getting out of this puddle. I am taking my other foot and I'm stepping out. I'm taking control back over my own life. If these people couldn't give you what you needed, then they can't give you what you needed now. Okay? They can't give you what you need. So let them go. Letting go, because here's the thing. I really think a lot of us harbor on our past negative moments because we think, well, if I let go of this, where's my justice? Where, where is my justice? I can't let go of this. I have to keep thinking about it and keep harping on it. No, no. Letting go of what they did to you doesn't let them off the hook. It doesn't free them from karma. No, don't worry, baby. They're still going to get theirs and you will get yours. But you can't get yours if you're focused on theirs. You got to refocus on you. Give it up to God. I swear one of the reasons I'm able to stay in my magnetic energy is because if if you want to hurt me, okay. Send out negative energy. You're only going to get it back. I'm not going to take it personal. God will though. So count your blessings. I'm not going to worry about people trying to harm me. I'm working on creating positivity in my own life and in others. Remember, your blessings know your address. Karma also knows their address. Don't worry about it. Let karma, oh yeah, did you know? Karma's a fellow positive bitch. Oh, did you not know? Yeah, karma's a fellow positive bitch. She will find them where they're at. She will take care of it. You don't need to worry about them getting their karma. You don't need to worry about them getting their justice and you getting your justice. No. When you relax and just focus on you, naturally, your positive justice will come on in. And the karma that they have, that they sowed, okay, it will find them. You don't need to watch them and worry about it. That's it. When you give it up to Miss Karma, when you give it up to God, when you give it up and just let go, This lowers the volume of anger, of disappointment and hurt you had for them. And it allows you to raise the love you have for yourself. You are letting it go, not even because it's the right thing to do, but because it's going to free you. And that's why you're here. You are on this planet for you. You're not letting it go because, oh, it's the right thing to do, blah, blah, blah. No, you're doing it because you have to free yourself. What do you want to stay in their bondage forever? They hurt you. And now you're going to let them continuously hurt you the rest of your life. Your past is over. Refocus. Look at what's in front of you. It's not them. Stop looking in your rear view mirror. Stop looking behind your back. Look at what's in front of you if you want to create a new life. What are we doing? Letting this go isn't letting go of the karma they're going to get. It's not taking them off the hook. It's setting yourself free. They've taken enough of your time and your energy and your focus. We're not going to spend any more of our time having these self-harming thoughts about them, about what they're doing. We're no longer going to place them on our pedestal because we understand that's not our job. That's not why we came here. That's not why we incarnated is to be someone else's watchkeeper. That's not what we're doing here. So step one is giving up 
refocusing and being obsessed about our past and what they've done to us. It's having the mantra moment of even if people hurt me, I'm not going to continuously hurt myself. I'm taking my power back and I'm going to realize I'm creating a new life with new rules. I have the power to decide how I'm going to live for the rest of my life. I don't need to live in my past anymore. I can live however I please. And it starts with taking back my thoughts. It starts with stopping gauging, stalking their social media, checking up on what they're doing. It doesn't matter. Take back your control. Take back your focus. Take back your energy. If you keep focusing on your hurt, that's what you're going to grow in your life. You have to start focusing on your healing. We can't heal the disease in our life if we become it. You have to start focusing on your healing, on you, not what they're doing, not what they're thinking, not what they're living it up in their life. What It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No more. No more. So step one, stop engaging with this harmful behavior of thinking about them, stalking them, wondering what they're doing. Step two ties into step one. And it's all about realizing how the harmful behaviors we have engaged with and maybe are still engaging with right now, they were actually trying to help us. If you are dating the worst of the worst, if you've been binging, if you're drinking, whatever it is that you're currently doing that's harming you, of course we have to give up these behaviors in order to love ourselves. But before we completely shut the door on them, I want you to understand something about them. If you weren't binging or dating the worst of the worst or whatever it may be that your maladaptive coping mechanism is, God knows what you would have been doing. I hated myself for so long because I just, oh God, abused my body. To the heavens, to the heavens. I really did. I would starve myself, then binge eat, overwork out, be exhausted. Oh my God, the cycle was addictive and God awful. It, it's just like you're always starving. You always feel too full. You're, you're just, it's a never ending cycle of never feeling good enough, always feeling guilty, like you ate too much or I then hurt my body. It just, it's, it's God awful. And honestly, if I have goosebumps right now, because if you're going through this right now, I understand, like I, I get it. It's really difficult. And I'm not here to say these things aren't really difficult because they are, they are. And these cycles, we become slaves to our eating habits, to, the image that we want to be and it just has such a chokehold on us and we lose ourselves in it. When I was binging really bad, like, oh my God, like really badly, I was starving myself and then just binge, binge, binge and then I would feel guilty so I would starve myself and then I would binge because I was starving and then I would feel guilty and I would starve myself over exercising. When I was doing that, like, oh my God, level 10, okay, okay. And I, I will say this, my biggest issue in life always been food, always been food. And it's something that I will always heal through. And I love learning about it because then I get to share it with you. But I realized that if I wasn't abusing my body with food, I probably would have found something else. Yeah. If it wasn't food, maybe it would have been men. If it wasn't men, maybe it would have been drugs. If it wasn't drugs, God knows what I would have gotten into. I had to realize that I wasn't binging so I could have fun. You know, it wasn't a fun experience for me. That was my coping mechanism. That was how I was surviving. If I wasn't binging, I would have picked something worse. And if I wasn't binging or doing something worse, I don't know how I would have coped with that reality that I was dealing with. The behaviors that we engage with, even though they're not self-loving and they're not something we should continuously engage with if they're hurting us, I want you to understand they're coping mechanisms. You're not doing it to hurt yourself. You're doing it because you're saying, I don't know how else to survive right now. And this is, 
This is where I'm giving in. This is where I'm letting go of control. This is where I'm just letting it all loose. This whole entire time, while you've been hating yourself, I hated myself for binging and then over exercising, starving, making myself eat too much. I didn't enjoy that. That whole entire time though, those behaviors were trying to keep me alive. Subconsciously, I was trying to keep Cece going. I was trying to keep Cece alive. My body always been on my side. It's always wanted me here. It's always been communicating with me. It's always been talking to me. It's always been telling me this is what we need to run our best. Most of the time I just ignored those messages and I said, no, you're going to be starved because you have to look a certain way. And now that you're starving and can't even think or get up and you're blacking out, uh, I'm going to feed you so much that you're not going to be able to walk or breathe, basically. I was trying to override what my body was naturally trying to do, which was love me. Because my body is a gift from God and all it's ever has done is try to love me and help me survive. If your parents gave you a really expensive or nice gift or or even a, a partner gave you a really expensive or nice gift, how would you treat it? Would you throw it in the back of your car, never look at it again? Would you disregard it? Would you spill your coffee on it? No. You would hold it with the utmost respect. You'd be like, wow, this is such a nice gift. It's so meaningful. It was so expensive. I'm going to treat this right. Our body is a gift from God. It is the only way we're able to exist on planet Earth. And we're disrespecting it with binging, whether it's drugs, alcohol, food, men, We're disrespecting it. We have to start seeing our body not as something that we're trying to run into the ground and make look perfect. We have to start treating it as a freaking gift because that's what it is. Without this body, we couldn't be here right now. You couldn't be hearing me. I can't be connecting with you. I recently was on an airplane and I had at the airport a smoothie and I think there was almonds in it because I broke out with dermatitis and I had allergic reaction. I had to take Benadryl. And this was the first time I really had dermatitis where I thought to myself, I'm not going to hate myself. (laughs) I'm going to realize my body is trying to save me. I put something in my system by accident that my system does not like and it's bad for my body because it's causing this reaction, I'm allergic to it. And my body is trying to alert me of that. So it's causing me to break out. And instead of trying to pop the dermatitis, which by the way, don't do that because you can't, there's nothing to pop. It's an allergic reaction or make it worse looking. I just said, my body's trying to protect me. I just took the Benadryl. I want us to start seeing these behaviors as not a reason to hate ourselves, but as a reason that our body has always been on our side and has been trying to keep us alive. We get to go sleep and our heart continues to beat for us. Our lungs continue to work for us. Our organs, our digestive system, this vessel here is a gift. It's not something to hate. It's not something to disrespect. It's a gift. It's something to treat with the utmost respect and understand. It's a communication center. It's trying to communicate with us all of the time. So whether you are binging and starving yourself or you are doing some other maladaptive coping mechanism or you kept engaging with the same toxic relationships understand that what you were doing you were doing because you thought that was the only way you could survive and subconsciously all you've ever done since you were a baby was try to survive and even though that's been your past your past doesn't have to equal your future you're allowed to change you're allowed to shift you're allowed to become a new person And these coping mechanisms, they may have been the best that we knew how to do and so we did them, but now we're learning to do better and we're allowed to release them. We're allowed to release the criticism, the behavior, all of these things. We don't have to keep engaging with them. So step one is to 
Stop engaging with our past through focusing on it with these self-harming thoughts. Step two is to realize that the self-harming thoughts and behaviors weren't something we were doing to get back at ourselves. It wasn't because we hated ourselves. We were actually just doing these things to survive. We were actually just doing these things so we could continue on this planet. We've actually always have been loving ourselves, even if the vehicle in which we loved ourselves in wasn't helpful to us but we tried we didn't always know the best way to love ourselves but we tried now we're gonna learn and do better so step three is something I'm calling line up and label the really interesting thing about being a human being is that not all of your thoughts and your emotions are yours thoughts are energy emotions emotions energy in motion we are not just broadcasters of frequency we're also receivers so if you were growing up and you had a coach or a parent or you were bullied and you were heavily criticized we are receivers of that energy and from ages about two to seven we're operating in theta state that means our subconscious mind is wide open so anything we're being told we truly believe if we've been heavily criticized while we're growing up Those thoughts of others, we receive them, they now become our own thoughts and become our inner critic. Even while we're adults or teenagers, whatever it may be, we can go to a party or a yoga studio or wherever and we can still pick up on thoughts that are negative from other people and think they are ours because the thoughts that we think, they will come through in our own voice the thoughts that we receive will also come through in our own voice so it's hard to decipher is this my thought or is this a thought I'm picking up is this my emotion or is this an emotion I'm picking up I always say my empaths girly girls you gotta be careful and you gotta protect your energy because if you're too receptive your solar plexus is too open you're receiving too much energy you're going to be constantly anxious, constantly self-critical. So what you're going to do is number one, every single morning when you wake up, this is a technique I learned from this woman called Pat Long, I believe her name is. And a technique that she taught me is when I wake up, I'm going to think in my mind and thoughts are energy. So they are very real. They're as real as can be in this energetic universe. I'm going to see a golden chest plate on me. And every single morning, I'm going to really surround myself in this golden plate, see that it's on my chest and know that I am protected. And while I'm going throughout my day, anyone who sends me energy, it's just going to hit this golden plate and be sent back to them. And I don't need to worry about it. Done. So every single morning, we're protecting ourselves with this golden chest plate. The other thing I want you to do is write out Have a notebook with you throughout your day, even your phone, okay? And I want you to pay attention. When you have a negative thought, write it down. Write it down. And then I want you to reflect on this thought either in meditation or journal about it at night. Do I actually believe that I'm not worthy of anything good? Hmm. When did I first think that I was not worthy of anything good? Who made me feel like this growing up? What I want you to understand is that these thoughts you'll come to realize through self-reflection are not yours and have never been yours. You weren't born with these thoughts. You inherited them through existing, through existing. Don't let other people's projections become your predictions because you're letting their negative energy into your own vessel and then thinking that they're yours. Just because that is in your head doesn't mean it's your authentic voice or it's your truth it means that you're receptive to someone else's negative energy that's all it means so when you have a negative thought write it down and reflect on it who gave me this when did I first feel it do I actually believe this what's a better feeling thought I can think and then that's going to be your new affirmation we need to better understand that we have always been on our own team 
Our body has always been on our own team. Our thoughts have always been on our own team. And we can't help that we live in an energetic universe and we are receptors. But now we can understand, okay, I can protect myself with my golden plate. When someone sends me negative energy, I can say back to sender, back to sender, back to sender. I literally would go to this yoga class and every time this woman is in the yoga class, I get negative thoughts every single time. And I realized, wait, these are not my thoughts. But every time this woman is here, I'm feeling so negative, so negative. And I literally had to move my spot because I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. I had to surround myself. I had to put my golden plate on. And I said, okay, Cece, get it together here. Protect your energy. And we're, we're going to refocus on our yoga class. But you do have to protect your energy. So step one to self-forgiveness is understanding that we have to stop engaging with our past. Our past doesn't equal our future and we're not going to allow it to continuously flood our present moment. Step two is realizing we have always actually been on our own side even when we were engaging in the same patterns with the same dudes or the binging or the starving or whatever it is. We were actually just trying to cope with our reality and that was the only way we knew how. And if we knew how to do better, we would have. But that's all we knew at that moment so we can forgive that okay then we're gonna step three line up and label are these thoughts mine are they someone else's when did I start thinking this and we're gonna protect our energy with the golden plate now step four is the most important part now step four is something called Pono. now this is my favorite way to connect with my body and really give it self-love. If you deal with autoimmune disease, this is because a lot of the time there's energetic dysfunction. And so what happens is we're so self-critical of ourselves that our body starts attacking itself too. Yep. I love using Pono to work with any autoimmune dysfunction, any dis-ease in the body. It's, it's really helpful. What is Pono? So Pono is an ancient Hawaiian healing modality that literally means to make right. This technique allows us to take responsibility over our life, our state of being, our pedestal, and ultimately allowing us to take our power back. This modality allows us to release our past so we may live in our present mo- moment and it's for mantras. These four mantras are, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. Don't worry, we're going to do this together. When you're doing this technique, you can think of someone who has hurt you in your past if you want to make it right energetically with them or maybe someone you hurt. But since we're learning how to forgive ourselves, I really think it would be most beneficial that we use this to think about either our past self or our body or our current version of ourselves. And we're going to make it right with either a past version, our body, or who we are today. We want to give ourselves love and forgiveness so that we can move on to the next version of who we wish to be or just feel more peace in our current incarnation. When you're saying, I'm sorry, that's the first mantra of this. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm just going to explain why we're saying each mantra and then we're actually going to do it together. When we say, I'm sorry, you're saying this to accept the responsibility for the energy you have brought to the table and any of the events that may have corresponded to this energy. So if you've been hurting your body, you're saying, I'm sorry for engaging in those behaviors. So you're saying, I'm sorry to myself. Then you're going to say, please forgive me. And you're saying this to make amends with either that past version or your body, the current version of you. This is asking for forgiveness for the past treatment. Then you're going to say, thank you. You're showing gratitude. You're raising your vibration. And then the the last mantra is self-love. It's just, I love you. And this further raises your, your vibration. So I want us to just, you know, shake out our bodies for a second, Okay. And let's take a deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouth. You can close your eyes if it's applicable to you. If you're driving or working out, obviously keep your eyes open. But I want you to imagine, envision in your mind's eye either this past version of you, your current self, or your body. And I want you to say to this part of you, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry for treating you negatively, for staying in patterns for longer than maybe I should have. I'm sorry for starving you and then binging. I'm sorry for not learning better sooner. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I want to make this right. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. The whole entire point of this episode of making amends with our self or the past version of us, even the current version of us, is to understand that even if we didn't always engage in the best behaviors, our intention was always to survive and keep going. The binging, the staying around toxic relationships, our intention was just to survive. You actually have been on your team this whole entire time, even if you didn't realize that you were. You actually have been trying to save yourself this whole entire time, even if you didn't realize you were. You actually have been really trying really hard this whole entire time, even though you didn't know you were. And you got yourself here. So now we're not going to stay in the patterns that have not been the best vehicle. We're going to release these. We're going to let these go so we can make room to become a better version of ourselves. So we can make room for peace. So we can make room for happiness, whatever it may be. You're not standing in that puddle anymore. You stepped away from it. You stepped out. You moved on. Let the past rest in peace so you can come alive in this new cycle. It's rebirth rejuvenation, resetting, refocused, redirected. That's who you are now. Practice with Pono every single day and you will start giving, oh my God, such a release to yourself. You're going to feel so amazing. You're going to feel aligned. It just will get better and better and better. Now next week, we're going to continue to talk about self-love, but this time it's going to be a little bit different and we're going to talk about how to create self safety because it's hard to love ourselves when we're constantly looking over our shoulder and feeling really uncomfortable and really unsafe I love you so much as always the sparkle in me honors the sparkle in you if you enjoyed this podcast please interact with it on YouTube leave me a comment I would love to speak back to you in the comments like the video subscribe And if you would like to, it would mean the world to me if you could leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If not for me, do it for you because good karma. And I will see you in the next episode for next week when we talk about self-safety. Bye.